two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Am I coming through? Did you hear me? No. But, uh, do I need to hear you? No. Okay. Right. right. Switch off your phones. Strengthen your voices. It's finals time in the National Club Sevens. It begins with a bowl final between local rivals. Hello, boys. Maris to the right of screen. And Oriental Rongatai in the traditional black and white hoops to the left. Sheridan Rangihuna, the Hello Boys Marist Eagles Premier Captain, will begin proceedings. The game is underway. Hello Boys Marist against Oriental Rongatai. And an athletic catch from the kickoff by Penny Ali Poasa. And an early penalty conceded by the Eagles. Stephen Butler. The 19 year old who was a part of the Wellington age group program this year dispatches to Roderick Solo, well contained by Ali Patu. And hello, boys, Marist have stripped possession away. It's Todd Svensson darting towards the line. He's a metre short, numbers to the right, and that pass doesn't belong in the family album. It's a shocker from Blake McGregor, so. Warriors will have a defensive scrum five metres out from the line with me in commentary this afternoon as a local referee and head dean of year 10 St. Bernard's College, Brad Hudson. Brad, welcome. Thank you, Adam, and uh, it's great to be joining you in the first of our three finals in this last session of today's National Cup Sevens. Unfortunate mistake there by Blake McGregor because that would have been probably a try for a Hello Boys Paris so therefore Warriors got a chance to get out. And they will receive some assistance from the referee, escaping their own in goal area. A penalty has been awarded to the Magpies. Roderick Solo is unmarked on the right wing side. He scored a hat trick in the previous match. The youngster from Scots College was a part of the Knight Sevens program, which unearthed Portia Woodman. Hinkley Sayosi. Scurries to the 22 and unloads for Poasa. Brave tackle by Rangi Huna. But Hello Boys Marister penalised. What was the call? The call there again was a side entry or breakdown. The previous time was a scrap penalty, so another relieving penalty for Orange Rangitai. Ethan Webster Nonu steps off the right foot, secured by Rangi Huna. Penny Ali Poasa has been industrious early. Stephen Vaa, idle at the 22, searching for space, marked closely by Spenson, now Vaa accelerates suddenly and unloads for Poasa. Beautiful delivery to Herman Siumanufangai, those two together are like a bus fleet, or he's 15 metres out from halfway, Tom Spenson stolen the ball again, that's the second time that's happened. Support by Ali Fatu, and he barrels to within a metre of the post. Sheridan Rangi Huna in space, ferrets over. So, Todd Spencer with two breakdown steals. The youngster from St. Pat Silver Street had four brothers who played for Upper Hut, and now he's in Eagles colours, proving his value when Rangi Huna scores. And Todd Spencer has been extremely uh, entertaining these first few minutes of his first uh, two live breaks and also two good big turnovers. But he's been crucial in setting up not just one try, but could have been two. So excellent work by the young man who's uh, gone for a new opportunity at Hollywood Boys Paris this year. 
Todd Svensson is a distant relative of Snowy Svensson, who was a great midfield back on the All Blacks and Vincent Tour in 1924. His mother Leanne is a hairdresser and father Carl. Owns a lawn mowing business, great family, the Svensons from Upper Hutt. The conversion is on its way from William Ruhr, and it slides across the face of the target. And hello, boys, Maris, the early leaders by 5 to nil. Oriental Rongatai, Brad, were rather languid in their attempts to escape the 22. Reluctant at this stage, surprisingly, to involve Solo and Webster Nonu. Sheridan Rangihuna's restart floats down to Roderick Solo and he was claimed in the air so that's an automatic penalty Stephen Barr Declan Hay the sprightly veteran fends off Svensson reaches the 10 metre mark and then reverses for Herman Siumanu Fungai he's escaped the first tackle he unloads to Webster Nanu. That's a 720 degree turn. Hinkley Sayosi has it. Here's Roderick Solo. Look at those feet. Lowered in the 22 by Soloa. Stephen Vaa was late to arrive at the ruck. But there was an infringement by the Eagles. Solo taps it. Toying with the opposition. Another try for Roderick Solo. Roger Solo continue on his fine form today. He was one of the important tries of my game uh, this morning. And him and Ethan Webster not have been true uh, stars for Orange Road Boy today. Hello, boys, Maris. Uh, just really need to work on their discipline. They're going to buy a few penalties. Uh, a lot of them, you know, not civil penalties, but they're just penalties that uh, just require them to be more patient. And uh, it certainly is a lot of catch to the crowd at him because it's uh, quite noisy when every time they get penalised. Declan Hay has missed the conversion attempt. His legs were a part of a Marison Pats Jubilee Cup success in 2009. 2009, the Black Eyed Peas were top of the charts. Declan Hay, one of our favourite veterans in Wellington. Five all. Maurice and Huddle Boys Marist. These two teams played each other twice in the Premier competition this year. And wins were split. Todd Spencer takes the kick off and dashes clear. 10 metre mark. Spencer seeking support. Isolated in a one on three. Hurries the ball back to halfway. Bailey has it. That's a big pass. Which bounces favourably for Ferretti Soloa. Good tackle by Webster Nonu. Rangi Huna. Hello, boys, Maris in retreat. Realign their attack on the right side. And the bustling. Alifatu takes it beyond halfway. Sheridan Rangi Huna presents the ball in one hand and then distributes beautifully for Saloa. Rangi Huna profits from his pass. The captain, a deserving scorer of that one. No, he surrenders the ball at the last moment. And the touchdown is completed by Blake McGregor. Uh, good work there by Sharon Rangihuna, yeah, former Wellington Lions halfback, uh, to represent Wellington in Sevens. And uh, last year, after the season, went off to play for the uh, Wild Guys in Japan for a little bit, and then returned home. Uh, good to see him out there. He's a, he's a true leader for all these uh, men of the Huddle's Maris team. And then that extraordinary break there, he helps set up. It's just a true pass of the young man. On the subject of returning home, we'd like to thank Ken Laban for his uh, contribution to this uh, broadcast this afternoon. He's scurried to the airport. He's in Buenos Aires tomorrow for the Hurricanes and the Hacuarez. Half time at Jerry Collins Stadium. Hello, boys, Maris 12, Oriental Rongatai 5, and Brad. Oriental Rongatai, a late addition to this tournament, lost their first game comprehensively to. Marist Ardmore, but they have bounced back strongly to win every time since. Hello boys, Marist in a very tricky pool yesterday were somewhat grumpy with their placement in the tournament. They only won one out of three on Friday, but they bounced back hard today and perhaps are in a surprising position here. Well, you do a place to most of the time, Adam. It's, uh, you know, they're quite, quite 
good word at times, but uh, other awards merits, uh, you know, they can be pretty happy where they are. Yeah, they got placed in a tough pool, but uh, it's the nature of sport for you know, when you're in these competitions. Uh, it's not often the case. I've uh, participated in many sports such as water polo, where teams are played in a coach where you get placed in a pool and you know you shouldn't be in that pool, but you just have to show your best to get out there and show the best box. This is the National Club Sevens. Only two matches remaining after this one. Up next we have the plate final between Timaru Old Boys and Alam Reunion. An all South Island affair. Timaru Old Boys scored two tries in 30 seconds to steal a most improbable victory in their semi final. And Alam Reunion have been consistently competitive this weekend. And then the final is between Tapuna from Bay of Plenty and Ardmore Marist from Counties of Manukau. County's very strong in the sevens at the moment. Their woman were the national champions last year, and the men made the top four at Mount Monganui. The second half is underway, and the kickoff is taken uncontested by Ethan Webster Nonu. Or he's 35 metres out. Herman Simon Fungai, nailed by Svensson. Loose pass. Penny Ali Poasa, that's a long way down for the prop forward, but he smothers the ball and recycles successfully for Ori's. A runaway. Herman Simon Fungai is in and scores soon to be tied, possibly, Brad. Oh yes, the tank himself, Herman Simon Fungai, scores. A good patience from Ori's just going through. Two phases, and then he took the chance and exploited the gap. Good thing about Herbert Simo the final line, he's just recently been over in Canberra, uh, trialling with the uh, Canberra Raiders. So good on him. And he didn't make it, and we're happy to have him back in Rugby Union. Herbert Simo the final line, looking very lean, I might add, too. He was a little bit more burly last year, but he is in tip top condition here, and he showed with that. Run away for Ori's second try. 12 all is the score. The restart is well taken by Nash Fiso Vaile, formerly of Wainui Amana. In fact, he was in the Wainui Amana team, which won this tournament half a dozen years ago. Perini Soloa, one of the most prolific try scorers in Wellington Club Rugby. Walters for Rangihuna, two to his right, and only Penny Ali Pawasa ahead. What a brave tackle! by Pawasa, scampering across to shut down the overlap, and now he's managed to pull for the ball. Oh, he knocked it on in his attempt to pick it up, but that was a crucial defensive intervention by Penny Ali Pawasa, who was looking fitter and meaner than I've ever seen him. Well, yes, he, uh, he's had a few of the issues over the uh, years, he's had a few issues with his shoulders, and uh, he played a little rugby for about two or three years, and we just see him back out there, he remained close to the front row. But as you said, I mean, he's looking very fit and lean, and he's getting around the park very easy. 12 all is the score. Glenn Walters is positioned at first receiver. He scored over 400 Jubilee Cup points. Todd Spencer at halfway. He's been a danger in this game. Walters throws that pass out towards Kandala. So the referee will bring proceedings back for a scrum. Well, Walters had the right idea. The eagle was unmarked in the corner. Couldn't land, so it's a scrum for Ori centre field, 35 metres out, and this is a very dangerous position for Ori. Oh, exactly right, Adam. As we know, with uh, Ori's traumatised teams over the years, and even in, in defensive positions, they know going to get out of these tricky situations. So uh, do watch for guys like Stephen Butler, who's the one who has solo to cause some magic here. Stephen Butler looking to engineer his own magic, and he's broken free. Halfway, 10 metre mark, Saloa in pursuit, Ba'a throws a loose pass to no one in particular and Hello Boys Marist have regrouped and won a penalty, Sheridan Rangihuna taps, a frenetic pace in this one, Walters, smashed by Sayosi. Benson curls it out to Rangahuna. Wide for Peretti Soloa. Halfway. Solo comes across. 
Hello boys, Maris, 35 metres shy as Saloa storms inside the 22, caught by Solo, who has put his hands in the ruck. 12 all. Hello boys, Maris and Ories. Only two and a half minutes left. And hello boys, Marist have a penalty 15 metres out. Rangihuna taps it quickly and he sneaked over for a try. That's a double for Rangihuna and the Eagles reclaim the lead. Well, he's not more than me. Yes, no, he's uh, done, done very well, Rangy Hoonah, good leadership, and he's still doing hard work as well, and Maris, particularly by Soli, who's charging around to the 22, through the number of defenders, with the advantage to open up the gaps, and the R.A. to run a defence, so, this crucial stage of the second half, hard work as Maris, Aaron, he's safe, but not so comfortable position with a few minutes left to go. Sheridan Rangy Hoonah. With this pivotal conversion attempt, ball on the way. It's smacked off the right hand upright. So no reward for Rangi Huna, and still time for Ori's 17-12, Brad. 17-12 and uh, 12 minutes have gone, but there's still a long way to go. Well, just free start. And uh, Brad Puddle was actually a lot to kick it deep, but not too deep. So they put Ori's back under pressure, just like they did before. The youngsters Ethan Webster Nonu and Roderick Solo have been well contained in this match. Can they ignite a late spark for the Magpies? 65 metres to travel. Pinkley Sayossi, a dummy and a dash. Svensson across. Va'a. Marlo Manua with a kick wide for Solo. Marlo Manua saw the space, executed the kick with military precision, and Roderick Solo touches down again at 17 all. Marlo Manua involved with the Wellington under 19 program this year, formerly of university, shows his feet of foot and vision by creating yet another solo score. Uh, I know, we know he's got an excellent talent. He uh, popped through the trial of club, Premier Club Rugby last year and uh, had some hits and misses. Uh, this year he has come out firing and this, he's really shown the talent that he has to exploit the gaps and weaknesses of the other opposition defence. He found that in particular. Oh, 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 17, 19, with only a minute of seconds to go in. And Ori's got to restart, so what do you think the decision will be here? Well, it's an interesting call. They've had a lot of success with the short kickoff, but I would be punching this long and forcing Hanoi Boys Marist to traverse the length of the field. And Marlo Manu has done precisely that, although it's intercepted on the fall by McGregor. Glenn Walters, wild pass, intercepted by Solo who built it into touch, and Oriental Rangatai have won the ball, and look at what it means to them. The bench flies in triumphantly to embrace their exhausted and jubilant team. Well, when they collapse on the ground, what a state performance by Oriental Rangatai. As you said, and they only, were, only became part of the competition on Thursday. And they've turned up here, and they are the winners. The bowl competition, the National Club Sevens for 2020 here at Jerry Collins Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, change in commentary team as we kick off the polite final between Timaru Old Boys and Alhambra Union from Dunedin. And joining me today is Magic. Welcome team. 
It's going to be an exciting final here, Ardu. Sick of the last game with the big one building. Two final. Timaru Old Boys with the late win in the semi final. Last cast try to get there in an exciting and thrilling match. One of my old stomping grounds growing up in Timaru, playing for Old Boys under 10s. I think my coach was Peter Tudden. Peter Tudden, you're listening. Thank you very much. You're a great coach. But you didn't help when I twisted my ankle that day. <laughs> Alhambra Union, hailing from Dunedin. It's a South Island event here today, Aru. The Otago Champions, up against the South Canterbury Champions. South Canterbury taking on Otago, a fierce rivalry on that side of the island. The plate final, live and exclusive here on Huddy Sports. Ori's coming away with the uh, win in the bowl final against Hutt Old Boys Maris. Alhambra, Levi Emery with the kickoff. Slight fumble there, but Timaru Old Boys have it. Spreading it wide now. So we've brought it. Out to the wing now with McCoy. Taking their time here, looking for space. Will it open? We'll soon find out. Making their way up the field here, what a step! Timu Old Boys! It's Dylan, and Dylan goes all the way to score! Desmond Dylan underneath the post from nothing. Nobody was touching him. Fuck it, all the skin here, super ready, he made it all the way through. Should be an easy two point conversion here. Timu Old Boys were inside their own 22. Looking for some space and looking for an opportunity and out of nowhere Desmond Dillon ran the length of the field and did a little bit of work to get over underneath the post. Rawson taking the two successful seven points to zero. Timaru Old Boys 2019 seven champs. As was mentioned earlier in the day a lot of history there at the lower grounds in Timaru. If you're listening from down there, welcome. Old Boys established in 1908. Alhambra with a couple of very famous New Zealand internationals and Josh Kronfeld and Farah Palmer. Former players of the club as Timaru Old Boys restart the matches with Broughton. He's been outstanding today. The long ball. It's with Faulua. Takes it to ground. Referee calls a penalty here. Brought in with the quick tap. Keeping it tight now. And he finds the outside. And they're in again, Timaru old boys. Two tries in two minutes. This is a spectacle. 9 0, Timaru old boys. 12 0, apologies for that. A little bit excited there, the Inaru. On the far side there with the try, just trying to see who it was, but a fantastic effort leading up to that on the far side. Broughton involved yet again, the playmaker for Timaru Old Boys, finding his winger on the outside as he lines up the kick from his favourite side, the left footer. Unsuccessful. 12-0 Timaru Old Boys. Two and a half minutes gone in this one. The plate final. Gee, they're on fire, aren't they, early? Alhambra. Need to get back into this game, but it's only early days, three minutes in to the first half. Ryan brought him with a high kick. Timaru regather here. Falua with a big rampaging run. Keeping it alive, it's Broughton. Broughton. Done well, it's back to Faulua, it's gone backwards. Van Sal takes it to ground. Referee blows up a penalty for Timaru. A quick tap. Gives it to Broughton yet again. He's been involved in this one. And a wayward pass which goes into touch. Flick back, nobody home to recover that. Alhambra. Alhambra with a quick throw in. Been all Timaru old boys in the early stages of this one. Alhambra have been deprived of possession. An 
an interesting set play here from the line out. Alhambra have set up well here. Emery. Out wide, good hands. And he sees a gap and he's through. That's Emery. Levi Emery. He'll have the pace. And that came out of nothing there from their own 10 metre line. Levi Emery looking to convert his own try. He does it. Quick play. Alumbra want to get the points on the board. McCoy did his best trying to chase him down, but he was just too quick. Emery, who we've seen on today, has been one of the performing players of this tournament. McCarthy, Emery. The real playmakers of this team at the moment. Great contribution by everybody. The Alumbra Union established in 1884. One of the oldest clubs in New Zealand. A raking high kick. It's come down with snow on it. Timaru old boys. There was a slight hand there. Knock on. Timaru old boys have the football. So Magic, we've, uh, we're almost finished here in the first half. What are your observations so far? Uh, Chipper old boys have come out of the out of the stables firing, haven't they? Our lumber is just holding on here. It's brought in. Referee blows it up yet again. It's early days here, I don't know, it's early days. We've seen a bit of this today. Reset scrums. It's not what you'd like to see in sevens. We're coming to the end of the second day of a long two days here at Jerry Collins Stadium in Porirua. The sun's come out, she's a beauty and off we go. Timaru Albums. It's brought in again. He's been in the thick of it. He's done well to get it away. Slight knock on there though. We had a good view of it. Pressure's come on. A little bit messy there. Both teams trying to get their hand on the ball. Ryan Broughton had the right idea in terms of offloading the football to Tunnicliffe. Unfortunately, the execution wasn't quite there. And now Alhambra in prime position. They're down 12 points to 7, Alhambra. Looking to hit before half time. Now there's a break by Hovum. An interesting kick. The bounce is kind for Timaru Old Boys. And it's that man yet again. of it and a knock on out there on the far side how many opportunities do Alhambra need well you've got to capitalize on the opportunities because you never know when they're going to come the referee looks like he's blowing half time so there we have it 12 points to seven at the break and we may have streakers on the field here what's going on here here <laughs> Oh, the traditional undie run. Okay, we've got the undie run here. The Huddle Boys, Maris Boys. Good sports going down in the in the bowl final earlier to Ori's. They even got their manager up here. <laughs> All fun and games here at Jerry Collins Stadium here in Porirua on a beautiful summer's day. It's been a great weekend. We've seen some. So we see some awesome talent here. In more ways than one. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about the streakers either. <laughs> anyway, just looking back at the first half of this match, this all important match for the plate. Timaru Old Boys are up 12 points to 7. They had a cracking start, Alhambra. Came back hard and closed the gap. Tamaru got up two tries in the first two minutes. Great start. Standout players so far in this one has been number nine, Ryan Broughton, playing for Timaru Old Boys. And for Alhambra, Levi Emery has been a playmaker. He's been setting up everything on the outside. Timaru Old Boys founded in 1908. 
closely affiliated with the local school. Tamari Boys High School, that's right. Tamari Boys Old School. My old school. As we kick off the second half of this one. Alhambra. They want to be the first to score in this half. Ball goes behind him. That's McCarthy. Oh, and a penalty against the attacking side. Timaru Old Boys with a massive opportunity here. The long ball. Oh, he's blowing it. Joe Coventry didn't play to the whistle, and Alhambra have come up with it. A lot of work to do now. Overlap here on the outside. Now it's uh, McCarthy. McCarthy. Out wide here. Oh, here we go. The rampaging bull. Oh, he went high. Vitali. They've got to check a, a potential shoulder charge here. The AR's going in. Wants to speak to the ref. Potential yellow card. It's not what two new boys want. Let's see what happens here. Referee's calling in. Here we go. Looks like number four for Timaru Old Boys. It's Paul Utele Saope. He's in the bin. So a man down, Timaru Old Boys. Ben McCarthy with the tap. Alhambra now looking to exploit on this. With Timaru Old Boys being a man down. The long ball. Bounces kind on the far end for Alhambra. Shaping to kick there. Jinking, dancing, finding his player on the outside. Coventry giving it out wide. Oh, McCarthy's dropped it. Opportunity went big in there for Alhambra with a man down. Timaru Old Boys. Alhambra searching. Trying to push through the team in the line of their own half. Timaru Old Boys, one man down. You don't want to hand over easy balls like that, Aru. Polu Tele Saopi is the man in the bin for Timaru Old Boys. He's a solid unit. They'll miss him. Another minute, he'll be back. You can't afford in these finals to go down to six men. This is sevens, and you need to keep them on the field. But things happen. Broughton to feed the scrum. Tony Cliff with a little kick in behind. The chase, the bounce will be interesting. And, it up. and what a try that is for Joe Hill. There's not much of him, but he's got some toe and the skills to pick up the ball and score there under the post. That's all he's got. Brilliant try, Joe Hill. Too many old boys. That's what they need. Leading 17 7 conversion to come. He should make the two. Let's see. Alhambra on the back foot at the moment. Four and a half to go. She's early days. Broughton converts the try to extend the lead to 19 points to 7. And they've done that with six men on the field. Now they're back to their full complement by the looks of it. No, not quite. Just counting the numbers here. Another few seconds and he should be back on. Here, here he comes, he comes now. now. So there he is. Paul Utele Saopi is back on. The full complement. We've got sevens now. Here we go. Alhambra. The long ball. It's dribbling away. Noah Cooper. Looking for Savis McCarthy. He's got some pace here, the little man. Back to centre field. Off him. The wide ball now. It's Coglin. Coglin looking for the inside ball. No, he fakes and he's carrying on here. On the sideline, very close to it, Coventry. And it's Hoffman with an interesting pass there. Emery's being tackled in a hospital pass by Hoffman. Timaru Old Boys come up with it. Hot on the attack now. Joel Hill looked to pass it, but it went down off a Alhambra hand and a scrum centre field for Timaru Old Boys. Timothy Oldboys is holding cool here for the last few minutes of this game. 19 points leading to 7. What can they conjure up here coming into the last few minutes? Alhambra, they need to pull something out of their head here. 
And for our watchers, there's only only three minutes to go. Looks like a tight hit. Oh. Yep. Ball wasn't out there. It was a tight hit. Alhambra come up with the penalty. I've got a bit of work here, Alhambra. Lee Waimari, one of their playmakers, taps it. Alhambra will need to score two quick tries here to stay in this one. Henry Rag gives it back inside to McCarthy. Slowly coming now. It's here with Emery, the playmaker for Alhambra. Looking on the inside for Coughlin. Back to centre field now. It's with Cooper. Cooper goes wide for McCarthy. McCarthy looking for support. He goes to the ground. Approaching the halfway line. It's Hoffman. Hoffman breaks free here. Waiting for support. It's coming. Now it's Vailuanga. Vailuanga looks on the outside and it's that man again, Emery. Being very patient here, Lal Umbra. Noah Cooper with a wide ball. It's with Hoffman. Hoffman takes it straight. He offloads the football. It's with Rag. Rag now. Rag's gone through. Rag with the offload to McCarthy. Luckily he's short. He picked that up beautifully. A loose ball. Timonu Old Boys come up with it now. It's scrappy. And a penalty awarded to Timonu Old Boys. Can okay, Timonu Old Boys shut it here in the last 45 seconds? It's looking good for them. Taking Just their taking time. Their time yeah. Just slowing it down. Could be in the bag. But hey, both teams have given it the all. What's the long the ball? Hasn't even made touch. Kick hasn't found touch yet. It's gone into the end goal. It'll be a 22 metre dropout unless Alhambra. No, they're going to run it. Of course they are. 19 points to 7 down from inside their own 22 now. What can they conjure up here? It's Levi Emery. Oh, big hit there, and Henry Rag manages to keep it alive, and it's Emery again, looking on the outside. Alhambra, time's up on the clock. Alhambra will want to finish strongly here. They've had a fantastic tournament over the two days, and now it's Vailuanga. Vailuanga goes straight in. He had a man on his outside. Jacob Coughlin. Some tired men out there. That's with Cooper. Cooper spots a gap. Cooper! What a great fend. And Alhambra will finish strongly here in this plate final as Cooper goes in to score underneath the post. And he converts his own try. And final score here. 19 to the old boys. To 14. Alhambra. Both teams deserve a massive congratulations for making the plate final and congratulations to Tupperdue Old Boys for winning the plate final here today at Jerry Collins Stadium. So for the, those of you still watching, please stay tuned in for the cup final between Tapuna from Bay of Plenty and Ardmore from Counties Manukau. Congratulations to Tupperdue Old Boys. Congratulations to Alan Brown Union. Thank you very much for participating and taking your rightful place in the G2 and National Cup Series tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the two teams. And for our main event, the final. The Middle Six County Wakefield Cup 2020 R. Tepula from Bay of Plenty and Ardmore Maris from County Monaco. The Summer of Sacrifice 
for Ardmore Marist and Tapuna has led to a golden opportunity, the chance of National 7 supremacy. Tapuna semi-finalists last year lost to the host club right here at Jerry Collins Stadium, Northern United. Can they take one step forward and reign supreme, or will it be Ardmore Marist to emulate their 1954 team, which won this title? In 1954, Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile. Anaru, some of the players in this game suggest that they could run a mile in under four minutes. Very impressive fitness, very impressive structures, and very impressive character to reach this stage of the tour. My father was born in 1954, so it was a very long time ago since the last time Ardmore had won this tournament. Looking forward to this one, mate. Well, Ardmore, Marist and Tapuna have already met in this competition. They were in the same group yesterday and it was a victory for Tapuna by 28 to 17. But Ardmore, Marist have improved in every outing since and was so impressive in their semi-final victory over Northern United. The final score, 19-7, but really their smothering defence resulted in a more dominant victory than perhaps the scoreline suggested. Absolutely, and players to watch here for both sides. Firstly with Tepuna, you've got Antonia Wonga, who's been an outstanding figure there on the left-hand flank uh, for Tepuna, and then for Ardmore, you've got some some fantastic players in the form of Liam Masere, Luke Masirewa, who's been a revelation here at this tournament. The players are in position. Ardmore Marist in the White and blue will defend the northern end of Jerry Collins Stadium in the first half. Tapuna, the only unbeaten side left. They were convincing victors in their semi final with the Tony Waka scoring three tries and pilfering three kickoffs. I suspect Ardmore Maris will head in the opposite direction with the start. Ardmore Marist, Tapuna, the national seventh title at stake. A short kickoff, disputed possession. Waka has it. Releases for Stone. Oh. This is an ideal beginning for Tapuna. Stone slows at the 22, eludes the defender, pulled down desperately, a metre short. Oh, a penalty for Ardmore on their own line. What a run that was on the right hand flank by Jordy Stone, Stone. The captain had a great tackle and chase too by Tolia Four. He was well behind Stone, but he managed to rein him in and then bounce to his feet and win the penalty. Such a difficult thing to do in full motion. Secure the player and then rise correctly and remain on your feet to extract the legal turnover. No. It, was, it was that man again, Antonio Wanga, who was just running down that right-hand flank there to set it up. He's been an absolute menace down that right-wing side. Perhaps the standout player of the tournament. His Masarewa in 13 is a very dangerous prospect as well. He scored four tries in the quarter-final and a try against North in the semi-final. But one of the key things about Masarewa is the experience he brings off the ball. He organises... Uh, oh, so well! A steal from the lineout. Look, tower. Another penalty for Ardmore on their own line. That was a case of Groundhog Day. Can Ardmore Marist escape their own territory? Josh Gray spins it wide for Tangi Duckenbow. A kick and chase at the 10 metre mark. The bounce is ideal. For Masarewa, who was also chasing. No support. Tapuna scramble back defensively at the 22. Ardmore Marist throwing the next punch. Number four is Batubua. He's five metres out from the line. And the ball is in touch. Well, one of the qualities that has separated Tapuna this weekend is their scrambling defence and that was the very best of it on that occasion. What a frenetic start to this match end to end. Players are looking tired, it's been a long two days for both sides. 
I'd like to uh, thank uh, Kim Laban too for joining us on this broadcast. He's hurried off to Buenos Aires. <laughs> Two and a half minutes played. National Sevens final. Ardmore Marist attacking inside the 22. Josh Gray, powerful. It takes two men to apprehend him. He unloaded to a support player to put a scramble across. Bromwich is number six. And he's tackled by Bill, just five metres shy of the line. It's Ardmore Marist asking all the early questions. Muscle Ray with a veteran. So composed, ran into a pickle there. Unloaded though, for Rungi Wai. Rungi Wai at the 22, volunteers to take the tackle, head stop, defiant. Masarewa, ball in one hand. Lovely offload for Bromwich. Tapuna are very secure in defence. Josh Gray, scrambles it out for Rungi Wai. Tommy Fua at the 22. Tungi Thuckenbell from that famous county's family. Sayosi was a Samoan international and William a very prominent player as well. A kick and chase by Josh Gray. There's space in behind the defence. Gray dribbles it forward. But it's covered by Latawa. What a chase by Latawa. Josh Gray looked like he was leading the pack there in the chase and Latawa came out of nowhere to save the day for Tapuna. But that's a triumph for the Tapuna defence. Ardmore Marist extended to both sidelines, couldn't find the hole, and then they chose to resort to the kick. It was a good kick, but unfortunately from the county's perspective, it was covered in goal by Tapuna, and this excellent Lotawa showing that he's just as effective on defence as he is on attack. He took it back inside his own uh, goal line there, so it's a five metre scrum for Ardmore. Huge opportunity for Ardmore here, right in front of their own post. The back line is split, 2-1. So the ball likely to head right. It heads the opposite direction, of course. And there's a charge in the line by Tommy Fua. And Ardmore Marist strike the first blow. And that's richly deserved. Well, it was only a matter of time. Ardmore piled on the pressure there couple of scrums which led up to that moment. Unfortunately for Tepuna, taking the ball back inside their own goal line led to a five metre scrum and from that point forward Ardmore sensed the opportunity and in went Simon Tolia Four with the strength and power to get over the line for the first try of this match. A great balance this Ardmore Marist team. Pretty well organised forwards and then speed on the flanks and aerial prowess too. Ardmore Marist did enter this uh, tyranny as one of the real favourites and it took them a while to establish their foothold on proceedings but their defence in particular has been a real highlight on the second day. It certainly has. And unfortunately the try scorer is uh, suffering an injury here and has hobbled off the field temporarily. He rejoins play now. Tell you what, Luke Masiru has been quiet so far in this match. He's still somebody to keep an eye on as the game progresses, but Ardmore will be happy with the start. And a bit for Tapuna has hardly touched the ball. He's been the architect of most of their attack this weekend, but he's been starved of the possession. Jordy Stone made a breakout earlier, but was shut down. And really, it was those two breakdown penalties on the goal line that were so vital in turning this game in Ardmore Maris' favour. Only 90 seconds left in the first half. Ardmore Maris 5, Tapuna nil. The restart goes out towards Moka Moka. He put his colleague under duress and Ardmore Maris pile in, hunting a turnover. A ball has developed and then wriggling away was Moka Moka and he wants a penalty for a high tackle. To pull a tap it quickly. He's Ten isolated, out from he's isolated there. That is a beautiful tackle and turnover performed. Tangi Fucky Bell, what an effort there. And he taps it quickly. Batupu is number four. He unloads! 
And Admiral Marister only five metres short, ploughing towards the line is Ruggie White. There's a violent trawl in the whistle by referee. And a penalty in yellow card is conceded by Tapuna. The swing by Gullis Pole here. And Masarewa will punish the Bay of Plenty champions. Well, we just spoke about Luke Masarewa and he's just made his mark on this match by scoring out wide. Luke Masarewa, player to watch there. That was Tana Tuhakaraina who was sinbinned just moments before that moment. Well, that was also a beautiful piece of play by uh, Rangi Wai. He made the tackle and affected the turnover to Hakaraina, just losing his uh, discipline, the victim of this relentless pressure. And to Puna, have a mountain to climb in this game. The conversion was kicked at 12 points to nil. The restart will happen before the break. Discipline leading down to Puna in the last couple of minutes. There were a number of penalties which led up to that Sinbin. I want to address that coming into the second half. Well, the other thing about Luke Massaro, which is so impressive, is that he could play anywhere on the field. That time he was out wide on the wing. We don't typically associate him with that position, but he was there ready to capitalise on that moment. And is always looking for the offload. He's a danger man. Ardmore Maris. With the restart, and Tapuna have knocked it forward. So another opportunity for Masarewa gliding into space. He makes it look so easy. Masarewa, 15 metres out. The tackler was Johnny Stone. Conceded a penalty to Masarewa this time. He didn't release the ball, Masarewa. I wouldn't if I was that talented either. But you have to do that. Now, Waka on the wing. That wasn't very subtle. He ran into two determined defenders. Gray with the stop. Can Tapuna engineer some points before half time? Well, that is the end of the first half. And Armour Maris lead by 12 points to nil. Two tries and a conversion. And really. Tapuna haven't been allowed to play their game at all. Admiral Maris so stifling defensively and that's been the difference in all of their games on day two. It's been all Tapuna in the final few minutes of the first half. So 12 to nil is the score. Admiral Maris and Tapuna and have some nefarious entertainment at half time. So, two tries for Ardmore Marist, and Tucky Thuckenbell was the first scorer, and then Masarewa, and Tucky Thuckenbell from that very prominent family in the county's Manukau. Arangawa is also another prominent name in that part of the world, and Siani Tupolodu, of course, is a distant cousin of the All Black and Blues captain Patrick Tupolodu. Simon Tolia for scoring the second try for Ardmore Maris. Barging over he's after a, a scrum. He's a resurfaced after that uh, knock on the shoulder compared to me. And such a tough try that he scored. Barrowing through uh, two defenders to uh, slam the ball down. So 12 points to nil. And essentially it's pretty simple for Tapuna. They need to get their hands on the ball and speed up the game. Ardmore Marist have been experts at slowing it down. This uh, Tapuna team has been at their best when playing at a very sprightly pace. That's right, Tapuna have been playing most of their uh, game within their own half, especially in the later stages of the first half. So they want to get a bit of territory, they want to get back down deep inside Ardmore territory. Tapuna celebrated their centenary last year. They won the Bay Wide competition for the first time. Can they add National 7's glory to that resume? It really would be the perfect way to cap those celebrations. It looks like Tana Tu Hakaraina is still in the sin bin as well. Tipuna. The second half is underway and Waka's prowess at the kickoff is demonstrated with a slap onto his side of the field and then there was multiple knock-ons. The ball Flying around like a pinball machine. And Tanatu Hakaraina has just come back from the Sinbin. 
So Tapuna are back to their full complement. He's been good this weekend, particularly on defence. He's one of those players that cleans up awkward situations and really jolts on the tackle. Not a speed merchant, but a vital part of Tapuna's ingredients. Right with the ball! When quality needs to rise, it does! Tapuna with the first strike of the second half. It's row in the middle. Some magic there from Rewi Tapuna out of nothing. A jinking step opened up the gap and he backed himself and his pace got him over the line for the first try for Tapuna. And it's hard to recall a single occasion where Biddle touched the ball in the first half but there he was at his very best and that's what he does so well. First receiver off the scrum or a line out. He's particularly influential, such a creative player with the ability to pass on both sides and see space before anybody else does. His goal kicking's been excellent this weekend too, and this one is a success! What a player Rewita Biddle is, he plays for the Bay of Plenty under 19s and the New Zealand Development 7 side, so he's certainly got the skills and the experience here in an all-important match like a cup final. And that Bay of Plenty under 19 side won the national championship two years ago and the fourth this year, so they are one of the premier programs in New Zealand based at the New Zealand Sevens Academy in Mount Monganui. Very impressive setup in that part of the country. Rowe to Bill with the restart. Walker slaps it honestly towards halfway, but it's stolen by Ardmore Marist. Gray has it, 45 metres out. Tomatini for Matu Bua. A chip and chase, he hacks it head again, the bounce is not ideal, although there is, perhaps... Latawa done extremely well to get back there. An inquiry the tackle, he's going to give a penalty try. Oh dear. Well, it was the retreating defender who tackled the chasing player without the ball, and Jamie Fairmaid has become perhaps the most important figure in the game now with that call. That's, That's a straight seven points. And Admiral Marist are up 19 to seven. A huge call there at Pelly Motawa now in the Sinbin for Tepuna. Well, Tepuna's uh, discipline is completely unraveled here. A yellow card in the first half to, to Haka Reina, a Bay of Pretty Sevens representative. And now they are reduced to six again. 19-7. to more Marist ahead. Tepuna looking for their first national title. Only one uh, Bay of Pretty side has managed to capture this trophy. For many years it was contested exclusively in the South Island, but since it's been opened up to the North Island, there's been a dominance of the North Island winners. Norse last year. Counties have been represented several times on the trophy. They appear likely to be again, but there's still time left in this one, folks. Four to go. Tapuna down by 12. That's a beautiful kickoff. But Tapuna have it covered through Bill. Oh, smashing tackle by Alama. Jordy oh. Stone throws an intercept! And that might be curtains for Tapuna. The ball is smashed away. And Glory could be headed in the direction of South Auckland. Wow. What an intercept that was. Tepuna, the execution wasn't quite there. They're a man down. They're well behind on the scoreboard now with the score at 24 points to 7. They've got a lot of work to do in the final few minutes of this match. Taki Duckenbell will smash over the conversion and suddenly it's a 26 to 7 and for the first time this weekend Tabuna reduced to six players uh, really struggling they've led from the outset in every game haven't been forced to chase a game whereas uh, Arnold Maris were down uh, yesterday against Mac early and Hello Boys Maris too evidently so they are a very strong chasing team Lotawa's just come back on from the Sinbin. The kickoff is claimed by Tapuna. 
Low tower. Bang! There is the try scorer with a jolting tackle. Rip Shannon after that one, but somehow Tapuna have a reclaimed possession. Biddle. Can he engineer something? Beautiful offload. But it went forward, and really that epitomises Tapuna's afternoon here. Referee was right there. A clear forward pass. Tapuna are desperate. They're trying to claw their way back into this game, but I think time may get the better of them. Two minutes left. National Sevens for 2020. Hope you enjoyed these pictures and comments this afternoon. Particular thanks to uh, Brad Hudson for providing this equipment and filming vigorously. So, it might be showtime as they used to say in Los Angeles with the Lakers 26-7. Attacking scrum for Ardmore Marist, 20 metres out from the line. Number 12 is Tom Atini, and he's an excellent player. He uh, represented Waikato and counties in the NPC. Wesley College product. Wesley College, the old school of Jonah Longu, and recent all back Nipo Lovala, who's a member of this club. Ardmore Marist. 26-7 up. Masarewa. It wouldn't be appropriate if he had the last say. Josh Gray, he's been excellent in the final. Bronich for a kick and chase into the end goal area. And that is carried back, so it's a five metre scrum. Well, the noose has been well and truly tightened here. Tempuna just can't catch a break here as a couple of replacements come on. In the final couple of minutes, again just a reminder to our watchers, Ardmore Maris last won the National Club Sevens back in 1954. They're on their way to another title. It's been a long time between drinks. Well, in 1954, Sports Illustrated was issued for the first time. The photos were black and white. That's how long it's been since Ardmore Maris have won the National Sevens title. Queen Elizabeth was in her first year of her tenure. It's just extraordinary how long it's been. Can Tapuna finish with a flourish? Number six is Tumaka Ryan. It's been a miserable final for him. He was yellow carded in the first half. Masaro was tackled. Biddle's been fantastic all weekend. A wide pass for McElroy. Ten metre mark. McElroy swerves back towards centre field. Claimed by three Ardmore Marist defenders. The ball is in touch. Ardmore Marist. Our New Zealand's best Simmons club in 2020. A setback on day one. Defiant brilliance on day two. They are the champions of the National Club Sevens for the first time since 1954. Congratulations to Ardmore Marist. The experience, the skill shown by the players, getting them over the line and a convincing victory here. 26 points to 7. Commiserations to Tepuna. They played well. Uh, star of the show for Tepuna, Riva Tepiru. A big heart. He did his best. But unfortunately, the discipline let them down in Ardmore Maris with the big win. And Ardmore Maris, uh, the 23 champions. They have a defeated Tapuna by 26 to 7 on behalf of Brad Hudson and the crew. I'd like to thank you for joining this telecast on Hay Sports. Armour Marist, New Zealand's National Sevens Club champions in 2020. Thank you very much, thank you.